Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Today, I got a kind of quick but very useful video for you on how you can enter DAG dependencies, flow data sets, and Airflow. Um, and so the importance of this and what I'm talking about is the ability to pass data both between DAGs and also to say, hey, I want to set a relationship thus that once one DAG finishes, then you know, produces a data set and the creation of that data set triggers another DAG. Um, so the main way people will do this is, you know, hey, I have a DAG that produces some data set and I, I want to then maybe put it into a model or kick off another job. And before they would kind of have to line up the scheduling parameters so that that second DAG would run after that first DAG had finished or using trigger rules. But if you're processing data, maybe the data didn't arrive in the location in time for when that trigger rule kicked off that second DAG. So that's why using Airflow data sets make so that you avoid that problem entirely. So what you see here is that, hey, once this uh, data sets ML publish creates a test CSV, then another DAG is going to take that data set um, and use it to kick off its own operation. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the code and I'll show you exactly how to do this. So here we are in our DAG file. And the first thing we're going to want to do is import some packages. Um, and so the key one here that's a real new addition is data set. And so this is what allows you to find the creation table and find a unique identifier and create an Airflow data set. So that's that little data set line uh, in that. Um, then we're going to import task and tag decorators and S3 hook just because this is centered around passing data through an S3 bucket. Um, so one important thing to note is that you won't actually be data directly in that other pipeline. You'll need to import in a location where that second pipeline can run. Bucket here. Um, then import pendulum for date time and we're off to the races. So after we've got our libraries all important, we're also going to variables. They're just our S3 bucket, our S3 key that we're using for C, um, and then this data set URL. So you're going to want to make sure for all your data sets, this stands for a unique identifier um, so that you can always identify that data set um, within that data set. Having the same name. Once we're done with that, then get started and actually create our DAG. That will just have a daily schedule, start date, um, pendulum date time. These don't really matter, honestly. So DAG uh, declaration. So let's move on quickly into actual task evidence, or a little bit more. Um, so there's really only going to be one task here, um, which is going to be uh, upload data to S3. Um, so you can see here we have this outlets parameter. This is actually how we're creating that data object. So because we're using a task decorator, um, hey, this is going to produce an Airflow data set. So we're going to need to find the outlets field here so that that is captured. It kind of give me the little preview of um, that data set URI here. And then so what we're passing into this is our S3 bucket and our S3 key. So it knows the data too. Um, so it's take just some local, uh, and have an S3 hook, take some local test data. Again, data is not really important. You're just high level concepts here. Um, test S3 key, test S3 bucket, um, place equal. Um, but if you don't want to go right in the data files, what I'd recommend is having a date time field here. So every time it parses, it will add a date time. All right, so you can keep data set. Um, and so because we have this outlets, it will take the output um, of our data set. So data set URI, um, and then create that object. With um, and then what we'll need to do because we pass the API is actually just define our task, our DAG. And now we've got our producer task done. Let's set up a task that's going to consume. So here, now we're in our consumer data set file. Um, and so what this is going to do is exactly like I said, data set we just have DAG, data set. Um, there also is a provider here for SageMaker, um, S3 derivative. So the initial point of this DAG was, hey, you know, take an S3, there's in a pass in a SageMaker. We're going to kind of ignore that because we're just focusing relationship. Um, and then we're also going to have a transfer operator just to take the data from S3 into Red. Run that SageMaker transformations on. Um, and so what we'll do here um, is, again, you're going to need to define your variables. Um, so one that's, thing that's really important to note is that in order to 
use a data set in it for in a downstream task, we'll need to reinitialize it in that definition. Uh, so what that looks like is taking the data set URI again, um, and then what we're going to do is in our DAG file, we'll use that data set URI. Here we have is our data set, data set URI. So this is creating a data set within this DAG, so initializing it, um, and then it is being used as the scheduling parameter. Um, so really simple at the end of the day in terms of link the two DAGs here. Um, add your data set URI, and then this will say, hey, every time that this data set is either produced or it's updated, so say constantly adding to a data set or I'm constantly overwriting it with these data, um, that doesn't matter. Every time update or happens, this downstream DAG uh, obviously is part of that task because you need that outlet speed nose to actually perform some update or creation operation in the data set object. That's really it. Um, so now you have a DAG that will produce and trigger every time that its previous DAG um, has data set. Sorry, one DAG will consume and trigger, and the uh, previous DAG will be. Um, that's really it. Um, so, you know, I could go into the rest of the DAG if you want to see kind of, I mean, there really isn't anything more important here. So I'll just kind of leave you with this. Oh, remember, this data set does not actually reference actual data. Very, very important that you don't try to actually query this data um, because it just. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something. I definitely did learn that. Um, like and subscribe. Have a good one. Data guy out.